Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. Last year, I looked at the top five one vs one civilizations in Age Vampires HD. But with four new civs and all sorts of balance changes, I think it's time for an updated list of where things stand in Definitive Edition as of July 2020. Now picking the best civilizations can of course be very subjective. So to take the bias out, I'm gonna be using the actual stats of online win rates. I'm gonna be looking only at the map Arabia, which will be a stand-in for land maps in general, and is historically the most popular for 1 vs 1s. To get a decent sample size, I've included data from the last three months, which covers a little under 150,000 non-Mir Arabia games across all skill levels. There's an argument that it's better to only focus on expert games for this kind of list, but I think including everyone just makes more sense both from a sample size perspective, as well as the fact it'll give the most generalizable list for the player base. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. At number five, we have these Slavs. They were number two last year, so it's a bit of a drop, largely because their farming bonus was reduced from plus 15% to plus 10% faster. The main thing holding them back, it seems, is they generally don't do well in games under 20 minutes, where their faster farming hasn't had a chance to kick in. Opening with scouts makes a lot of sense, and the farms might give a small help there, but it's speeding up the transition to castle age and booming on multiple town centers, where the extra food starts to make the largest impact. Once you can get your economy rolling, assuming you can survive any early game aggression, Slavs end up with a really solid mid game of knights combined with discounted siege, and you can see their games lasting between 20 and 30 minutes are really where they shine. That strength carries through to the late game as well with a variety of cheaper siege, great halberdiers, fully upgraded hazars, and of course still that better farming for a bit more population efficiency. For such a strong civilization, they're actually not a popular choice on Arabia, but the results still speak for themselves. Next up at number 4 is a comparable infantry and siege civilization, and that's the Celts. In contrast to the Slavs though, the Celts get off to a great start every game. Their lumberjack bonus helps almost immediately, and faster infantry gives them a great militia into men-at-arms opening. What I like best about their faster wood collection is its flexibility, helping both with archers in a very direct way, or even scouts into knights, as it's easier to build farms. As the game goes on though, they have a few major holes in their tech tree, like bloodlines, thumbring, and a lack of late game blacksmith techs. One vs ones often lead to a shortage of gold for both players as well, making it hard for Celts to take advantage of their faster firing and durable siege in the late game. If you can secure some extra gold though, their late game infantry and siege become a source of major strength, making them a good choice on both open maps like Arabia and even closed maps like Black Forest. Moving on to number 3 is yet another infantry civilization. And if you're just waking up from a 1 year coma, this one's going to be a surprise. It's the Goths. For whatever reason, the developers decided this year they wanted Goths to be top tier, and not only gave them free loom, which ends up equating to an extra villager plus 50 gold, but have also played around with extending their infantry discount into Dark Age. While the data I'm using does include some games back when they had the full 35% infantry discount in Dark Age, their win rate in June would still have been enough for third on the list. Not only have they consistently been a top 3 Civ on 1 vs 1 Arabia these days, they've actually been number 1 when you include data from all maps for the past 2 months. The reason why is pretty clear. They get off to an amazing start being one villager up heading into Feudal Age, while also having 50 more gold and a 20% discount on their infantry. It's not as great as it was a few months ago, but it still makes for an incredibly cheap militia rush. They follow that up with an infantry discount that grows each age, giving them a very clear game plan. One thing that flies under the radar though is they also have fully upgraded Castle Age Knights, and in the late game they can then include a pretty wide variety of Siege, complementing their heavily discounted Halberdiers or Hand Cannons to support their legendary Haskarls. They're certainly not a one-dimensional sieve, but they're good enough at infantry they can be played that way with a lot of success. Considering they weren't even top 10 this time last year, they've really emerged as the biggest winners of the definitive edition rebalances so far. Moving on, at number 2 we have the Huns. Now they've always been a classic Arabia 1 vs 1 sieve and have even jumped up 2 points from last year. Their bonus of not needing to build houses is solid and saves players of all levels some town center idle time. What I like most about Huns is it feels like you have a good feudal into castle age transition at both the archery range from archers into cavalry archers and at the stable with scouts into knights. Those are some of the best raiding units in the game, and the fact you never get housed just makes those transitions even smoother. They've been a top 5 Arabia civilization basically since Age of Conquerors came out, and that's still true even after several nerfs, as well as the fact they still have a useless Imperial unique tech. 
Now before we get to number one, I have a few honorable mentions that came in just below the sloughs. First of all, there's a three-way tie at 51.3% win rate between the Vikings, Mollians, and Incas. All three are defined by having strong economies, but a weakness in either the early game for the Vikings or Mollians, or in the mid to super late game in the case of the Incas. Still, across all skill levels, they're three very respectable civilizations, right on the line of top 10. Incas were even in the top 5 last year, but were hurt a bit by a nerf to tower HP in Definitive Edition. Just edging out that group, both at 51.4% win rate, are the Lithuanians and Magyars. They're a couple of really strong scout rushing civilizations. Lithuanians because of their extra food at the start of the game, and Magyars because of free attack upgrades and a scout discount. Both also have great cavalry unique units and decent trash units to fall back on, making for a few notable similarities. It's not too surprising then to see them perform comparably as a couple of standout cavalry civs. Contrast that with another cute couple at a slightly higher 51.6% win rate, where we have the Aztecs and Mayans, either of which could easily have made the top 5. Not only do their Eagle Scouts give them a bit better scouting in the early game, but both excel at early aggression, thanks to strong economies and some military bonuses to help them get early units out more easily. Their compositions are quite different, with Aztecs being geared towards infantry, monks, and siege, while Mayans are primarily focused on archers until the late game. But the result is the same, with in fact the same win percentage in being just outside the top 5. It says a lot about how well balanced the game is currently, that less than 3 percentage points separate the 12th highest from the 1st. But speaking of which, the number 1 Arabia Civ defending their title again is the Franks. Cavalry, it seems, is still supreme, and in fact not a single archer sieve made it into the top 5 at all. The Franks' faster berry collection, free mill upgrades, and what's essentially free bloodlines all together call out for going scouts into knights. It's such a smooth transition and clear game plan that it really takes the indecision out of the early game and lets you just focus on execution. They're becoming the new Huns as the try-hard players pick, but frankly it's for good reason. They even get cheaper castles, what's not to like? So those are the top 5 Arabia 1v1 civilizations entering July 2020. All of the numbers are from aoestats.io, which is a great resource for people who love to dive into the data. If you have PayPal, please consider buying the creator a coffee to thank him for the awesome work he's doing. That's all for this one though. Special thanks to Noah, Andrew, Gabe, Jean-Paul, Joseph, Brian, Seb, Paul, Samantha, and everyone else on Patreon for their amazing support of what I do. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.